monsters. You need them, you love them, but you're running out of new ones to throw at your players, and you need some ideas and inspiration. Now, I don't care if you're running Old School Essentials, Shadow Dark, Knave, or even that one game we rarely talk about on this channel. The Monster Overhaul is the book for you. I know I say stuff like this a lot on this channel, but for my money, this is the best monster manual of any game, period, stop, full send. Because, let's be honest, all inclusive games like Shadow Dark have a decent best area built into them, but eventually you're going to run out of sort of generic monsters to run. Or maybe you just want some really fresh ideas and some new takes on old classic monsters. But before you say, ah, I've got enough bestiaries and monster manuals, I don't need another one of those sitting on my shelves, don't click away yet. This book is so, so much more than just a bestiary. In fact, just calling it a monster book is a bit reductive. It can be used to shake up those classic monsters that you're used to throwing at your players and looking at them in a new light. Plus, the book has plenty of sample dungeons to go along with the specific monsters in each chapter that you can plug and play after you're inspired by the tables and changes done within this book. So let's go ahead and dive into some of those things I'm talking about. Greetings and welcome to Elder Goblin Games, the universalist TTRPG channel where the DCs are made up and the stats don't matter. Today we're here to talk about the best monster manual for Shadow Dark. And really, any TTRPG. One of my favorite things to see when I first open a book is useful tables and information attached to the covers. Here we have the different chapter layouts with page numbers and a very interesting way of categorizing monsters. This also works as a really great table for inspiration if you have no idea what to throw in your dungeon. We have an index, useful sidebars, and this is one of the best reaction tables I've ever seen in any game. It covers feral monsters, general, grandiose, and unusual. Then we have reasons for an encounter, based on whether those monsters are bestial, intelligent, scheming, or outsiders. Then we have situations, impediments, twists, and formations. And this is one of my favorite tables I haven't seen in really any other monster book, where they find you, and the weather. Here we have elements, vices, and virtues, local attitudes, and what they value. We have some unique features and textures that can be added to any generic monster. And I really love this table of generic monster upgrades. Just look at this. This is giving me ideas for two-headed goblins, vampiric bugbears, ghost mimics, and regenerating fire elementals. Like I said, this can cover so much more than monsters, even right out of the front of the book. We'll get into this a little later in the book, but there are also plenty of things to cover, like tactics and flavor for each monster type. And another just really awesome feature of this book is that no pages are wasted. Look at the table of contents here. Each of these is a D10 table to roll on if you need some ideas or inspiration. Take a drink every time I say ideas and inspiration for this video. And while we're here, I just want to say I really love how the monsters in this book are grouped in very interesting pairings. Pairings that feel more naturally suited for narrative and atmospheres for any type of game that you're running. And honestly, outside of the great mechanical value of this book, it could really be used for pure inspiration and storytelling. The amount of detail devoted to each specific monster is bar none. You'll see when I start talking about the goblin section. We have some generic stuff to cover, like an introduction and mechanical jargon. Then we cover how the monster stat blocks can be used or converted to so many different games. One of the things I truly love about this specific book is the natural language approach to mechanics. Like, let's look at armor here. Armor is given as none, leather, chain, plate, or plate and shield. Damage reduction and immunities are typically listed here. The table below is provided for reference purposes only. If you don't understand the values or abbreviations, don't worry. Any GM running a system will have a fairly good idea of what armor as leather means in that system and when to adjust a creature's armor. Then we have like our old versions like Thaco and of course Ascending AC for games like Shadow Dark and 5e and a simplified idea of things like movement, morale, special effects, and abilities. I mean, just look at the plain language here used for these different effects. Immobilized. Can't move, automatically hit. Regenerates. Heal a set amount each round, up to but not beyond the creature's maximum HP. Maybe you're starting to see how I really mean it when I say these can be used in any game. There's a great section here about tactics for different types of monsters, whether they're hungry, trapped, and startled, supremely confident, or impaired. 
tactics for social creatures, misinterpreted signals, the glory of nature, and the action economy. And I mean, just look at this full page art. If I do have one complaint about this book, it's that the size is a sort of double-edged sword. While it's awesome and great to have at the table when you're referencing it, it doesn't even fit on my bookshelves. I'm just going to do a little quick flip through here so you can get an idea of some of the things that are in this book. Here's the section on people monsters, the worst kind. Some random encounters for people. Generic village and a generic inn. Some adventurers. They're good guys, right? A D100 table of adventurer details. A generic world map. And I really can't emphasize enough that one of my favorite things about this book is that there are so many details and tables to change up your monsters and make them nigh unrecognizable. Plus, the art is incredible. I'm kind of obsessed with it. Just look at this section on heraldic beasts. It's like something out of a storybook. Okay, so let's get down to brass tacks and look at an example. And I'm going to dive into section 2 of the monster overhaul titled Dungeons, because these are some of the most common and iconic monsters that you'll see in any fantasy adventure. First we get a blurb about dungeons, an omen table fit with random encounters that match monsters from other sections of the book. Then monsters buy hit die, some might think of this as CR, dungeon ideas for those monsters, omens and encounters for the monsters in this section of the book, combined omens and encounters for monsters that fit well together, and then a very interesting where they find you table including corridors, rooms, and other features. This book also features a really nice ribbon, which is something I'm really starting to appreciate in my physical books. Then, we get into the meat of the monster stat blocks, which includes an entire page worth of table ideas and inspiration. For completely unbiased reasons, we're going to look at the goblin as our example. We start with number appearing, HD or HP, generic appearance, voice, wants, morality, intelligence, armor, damage, abilities, and of course, treasure. All the basic things you expect in your monster stat block. Then we have this awesome goblin table for mixing things up or giving them special abilities, like rubberized goblins that are immune to fall damage. I also really love that they included these menu options with things like flavor and notes, just in case you have the kind of party that likes to kill a monster and harvest their parts. And these tables are just jumping off points. Maybe you see a table in here it's not quite fitting what you'd imagine, but it is enough to get you inspired to do something similar or to create your own idea. Then we see what these particular goblins were up to when you found them. And oh my friends, the level of detail in this book. Goblins get a lot of love here, and I'm just going to go through the next section really quickly. Alright, so we have goblin names, things that goblins may have or use, goblin loot, where they come from, some goblin trivia, Goblin fears, I love this, desperate endearing goblin tricks, goblin leadership methods, then because goblins are one of the more prominent creatures in any fantasy world, we get an entire page devoted to the goblin war engine, which has different sections and is just a really fun idea. This section on the goblin war engine deserves a quote from the old granddaddy of fantasy himself, Tolkien. Now goblins are cruel, wicked, and bad-hearted. They make no beautiful things but they make many clever ones. Okay, I'm getting way off track here. And on top of this, each chapter includes a generic creature layer specific to one of the creatures within that chapter. For those of you who are counting, that's about 20 layers for you to take from this book, take a monster from that chapter, and plug it into that dungeon. The example given in chapter 2 is, of course, one of the most iconic dungeon monsters, the Lich Layer. I won't waste too much time on this generic layer, but there's a lot of interesting things here like examples of different liches, where their phylacteries might be hidden, what form they take, and the only way to destroy that phylactery. It's just good stuff. Plus, really easy to run and clean bullet point room layouts. For the love of the gods, old and new, more adventures with bullet point rooms. Okay, so the back of the book also includes this super easy to reference index of all monsters. Not to mention some of the most interesting indexes I've ever seen including an index based on hit dice. And if you don't like the way that the monsters are laid out in the front, this one's alphabetical. So yeah, that's really what I have to say about this book today. As always, I'm going to state that I'm in no way being compensated to talk about this book. I genuinely think this is the best monster book on the market. I have no idea why more people aren't talking about this. 
it literally works in like every tabletop role playing game, except maybe Mazes and Crown and Skull. Those games are just very unique. But to be upfront, it's not super cheap either. So if you want the PDF version, that's fine. I think it works all the same. I just really am on a kick these days for having physical media, and I just love the tactileness of flipping through a book and looking at the art. But I totally get that not everyone wants or needs a big chonkin' book like this. I'll link to Drive Through RPG, and I'll link to the place where I bought the book. I don't even know if it's in stock anymore. I think it was out of stock for a while, and I had to wait till it came back around. Blech. That's it for the monster overhaul. Hey, if you liked this video, please like and subscribe, maybe leave a comment. It really, truly helps this channel grow and to get in front of more eyes like yours so that people can see these books and games that aren't being talked about as much as the big two. It's what I do here on this channel. And if you're new, welcome. Here's another thing you can do to make sure you don't miss the videos and content that I post on this channel. You've got a phone with the YouTube app, right? Click on subscriptions, then at the top here, hit all. Then on the right side of the screen, you should be able to see which channels you have hit all on, indicated by a white bell. Make sure that for the channels you really love, like Elder Goblin Games, the little bell is white so that you see everything and not just what YouTube wants you to see or thinks that you'll click on. Just as a personal side note for something I'm excited about, I recently grabbed a bunch of adventures that I'm super excited about plugging and putting in my Shadow Dark game. I was thinking of covering them on maybe a future video, but then I discovered channels like Red Mage GM and Wasabi Burger. So go check out these dudes if you really want to learn about adventures. Their channels cover old school style adventure in amazing detail and are well worth a subscription. And while I'm just shamelessly plugging other channels to you, let me talk about two other channels I really love. House DM, who's the person who got me into Shadow Dark and through that game a bunch of other old school games. His channel is just a genuine delight to watch. You can tell he's really enthusiastic about the content he creates, and it's not news or drama. And also, I've done a disservice by not mentioning a personal friend of mine who got me into YouTube in the first place. Ginger Whiskered. He's got a channel where he plays niche video games and creates little stories and vignettes into those games. Go check out his stuff, it's really wholesome and fun. I know it's very different than what I'm doing here, but without this dude, you wouldn't have this channel. He encouraged me to make a YouTube channel, taught me how to edit, and made all these great little digital pieces of art you see all around my channel. Go give him a like or a sub, watch a few of his videos. Tell him the goblin sent you. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys so much. I know a lot of channels say this, but I have some awesome regulars who are always in the comments, make some really great points and conversations, and bring new games to my attention constantly. Thank you guys for what you do. Thanks for watching, and as always, remember, make mistakes, choose chaos, and throw some weird monsters at your players. Have fun. I have scoured to the heart of the archives deep, and traveled to the top of the cinder cloud peaks, and forded the ever plains for the answers I see. So beware of the realms where you meddle For the fates can be fickle When the dice settle